Good morning guys. Good morning. Hope we're all having an awesome day. Right, this is going to be a kind of shortish video, but hmm, gotta love coffee in the morning. I thought I'd make it right, and this is because I saw a very interesting video this morning by Daniel Keeping Fish. Um, he basically had an incident with a heater that almost possibly could have burned down his house, right, guys? And the reason I'm highlighting this is because. Um, it's very, very easy to forget that you do stuff on to forget just how dangerous heaters an aquarium or outside an aquarium in Daniel's case, um, how dangerous they can be. Right? By the way, guys, I'll leave links to his channel's, channel as well. Please go over there and show him some love. Um, and the reason I'm highlighting it, guys, is because of this image. Right, I'll pop it up right now. Right, I took this video. Um, a couple of days ago, and it was the one where I showed you how to feed uh, your shrimp, basically, right? And if you notice, right, there in this particular image, at the very top hand uh, left corner of the video, right, there is a fire, a smoke alarm, right, and it has the battery pulled out. Right, last week, I actually had this um, issue in the house where there was, you know what it's like, with smoke alarms, you have this peep every so often, and it is so annoying. Peep. Right, and um, our dog hates it as well, right? So what we've always done is we've just disconnected them and then tried to remember to get a 9 volt battery for them, right? So here is, here is the actual smoke alarm, right? And what we tend to do is we tend to uh, replace ours every single year, the actual whole unit, right? We tend to buy them, but it's, it's a shame as well because they can be kind of expensive. I think in some countries in the communes, in the community, they might actually give you these for free. Uh, but here in Norway, I think they're like, I don't know, 20 $30 each, something like that. So what we tend to do is, if they're under a year old, is we'll just get another battery and we'll see if it stops the peeping. If it doesn't stop the peeping, you need to buy a new smoke alarm. Right, and I think with ours, actually, to be fair, I think with this one in particular, I think it was a pack of five that was something like $50, something like that, right? So uh, make sure that you get your batteries changed and remember to do it guys, right? because the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, that video, the little clip that I just showed you, that was a week ago. Right? So I've not had a smoke alarm in my shrimp room for a week. And that is just flat out dangerous. Now, you guys all know my feelings about heaters and aquariums because yeah, to me they are death traps. Daniel's video highlights this uh, more than ever that I can't get how no and nowadays that they can't make a heater that if it overheats, it switches off completely, properly. If it's outside of the tank, if you forget to put it in. And like in Daniel's case, where he put, uh, he plugged a plug in, but he didn't actually have the heater in the tank. Why does the heater not just switch off completely? Why does it have to go into the state where it's going to start to go on fire, melt the plastic, damage anything in your house, cause smoke damage the lot? Why, why are these things so dangerous? So I really don't get it. I don't think in... Um, in the aquarium community that we talk about this enough where yeah, we really need to highlight the issue that heaters are deadly, right? In my time on YouTube I've had at least four fail. I've had at least two shutter in the tank. I've had uh, one in the Sulawesi tank that was already broken. That might have been uh, like a manufacturing issue or whatever, but the heater was still on, right? I was getting electric shocks from that said heater. Right, and and then after we had uh, the Jaeger heater that didn't have a controller on it, that overheated and it killed the entire tank. I've had issues in the past where I've had again had more electric shocks. So I've been really lucky that way. And by the way, guys, as well, there's always that one time where you do a water change and you forget uh, to unplug your heater before you do the water change. The water level drops and it goes just a little bit. Like all it takes is to go down like halfway down the heater and you end up with uh, a broken heater and an element that is in the water and you're putting your hands in there, right? So you can see how these things are just death traps. So yeah, make sure you get your fire alarms uh, tested regularly. Make sure that you uh, change the batteries regularly. I have one as, just default, we have one in every single room in the house. They are a pain in the ass when they start to go a little bit faulty because of the noise they make, but what price do you put on being alive? What price do you put on being alive? So today is the last day I will ever have a heater in my room. 
I had one in the bottom tank here that was on the floor because it was always that tiny little bit colder in the winter. Uh, but yeah, I'm no longer going to have a heater in my shrimp room at all. This was the very last one, right? So to make sure I don't use this, guys, and I'm, I'm going to make sure that no one else ever uses this, I'm just simply going to cut the cable, right? No one will ever, ever use this heater again. I'll probably break this and put it into the garbage as well, right? So, yeah, it shows you how much I feel about heaters. It shows you how, like, I detest them. I still can't believe that in, in, in 2022, they're not like ultra safe. Now some of you guys will also say that you can put controllers on them. I did, I have my own controller that I had on a Jaeger heater here. But guys, I just figured that it wasn't worth all the hassle, right, of trying to DIY stuff. And you know, you can, as guys have already told me, you can buy Inkbird ones, you can buy uh, decent um, temperature controllers, but Guys, you're talking about a heater that costs 20, 30 bucks and then you're trying to buy an Inkbird a controller that will, in Norway anyway, that will cost me probably 50 to 80 dollars for a heater. So that leads me on to the question, right, um, do you really need a heater in your shrimp room? The answer is no. If your room is above 20 degrees Celsius, 18 to 20 degrees Celsius all the time, you do not need a heater in your room. It is that simple. Right, but um, let me think about this. Yeah, so how do, guys, you will ask, how do I, how do, how do I deal with the cold in Norway then? Well, I have one central heater. It's a digital heater that's on the floor over here, and it heats my room. I only have it set to 18 degrees Celsius. In here, I have a boiler that keeps the water a little bit warmer as well. Keeps the room temperature a little bit warmer, not the water temperature. Anyway guys, I hope I've not blethered on too much. Go over and check out Daniel's channel. As I said, I'll leave a link in the description. And guys, remember to stay safe. Cut the cords and the heaters. You don't need them anymore. Bye-bye, shrimp fam.